What's going on, guys? Another day, another episode. Welcome to the Knowledge Boner Podcast. We are here on a lovely Thursday. I am your host, Dylan Starr, with my co-host, Wally Nguyen. And we have been, um, you know, getting a little bit of feedback on Reddit. And, you know, Wally kind of brought to my attention and noticed, um, you know, a, a lot of people saying certain things, such as um, a, a previous episode we did, um, I think it was uh, talking about people that fear entrepreneurship. And someone said something very interesting um, that I've seen a lot. And they were like, you don't understand and you don't know somebody's situation. Um, so I may, maybe they, they felt it was something uh, that was kind of being judgmental. Um, you know, Wally, I'll, I'll let you uh, kind of elaborate on that of what, you know, what was said. Uh, yeah, so basically, you know, he, he was on there and he was like, you know, it, he seems basically the, the way that we talk about it made it seem like we were trivializing, you know, people's individual situations. You know, some people have mortgages, some people have kids, like whatever expenses, finances and um, and wh- wh- whatever the case may be. Right. And, and that was kind of uh, the, the theme of the conversation, which I just think it's kind of funny that that that's the immediate thing that he said was the, the first objection is, well, what about my kids or or what about my what about my situation, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, but if you look at it, and a lot of these stories, where you need, like a lot, of, especially a lot of successful people, like they don't talk about like their situation too much. Mm-hmm. Like they'll tell you about where they came from, right? But they don't talk. They don't like that's not that's no longer an objection for them because you know you look at you know Ty Lopez, right? He always you know I had no money and I was living on a couch. Yeah, with like forty bucks in his account, right? Right, right, exactly. So so. <laughs> So that so that's kind of the that, that was kind of the theme of the post was basically you know he was like well what about my what about my situation what about me right yeah exactly and 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 I'm actually glad it was said because you know this this brings up a really good topic and you know just some things I want to elaborate on and what I find interesting is just the people I know that are that are that are successful and I'm, when I look at them and I and I hear their situation and then the other people like that 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 comment on Reddit and you know, that wasn't just a, a remark and a comment, right? You know, that was definitely a statement being saying like, hey, um, they could have been like a defense, you know, maybe they were defensive, but they were definitely uh, uh, stating that, hey, they have some self-limiting beliefs, that there's a reason why their situation is different, that they couldn't, you know, jump into entrepreneurship or get into business. Um, and, and guys, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm, I want to be real with you, I want to be honest with you. And that's what this is all about. You know, if you're having, if you're saying those remarks and you're having those type, type of statements <clears throat> and, and it's basically that fear coming out of you, it's that, that, that self-doubt. Basically what you're saying is you don't know my situation, but in reality, what you're saying is, it, you know, it, it's a, it's a fucking excuse. It's, 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 oh no, like I, I, my situation is different than anyone else that has been successful. My situation is worse than what other people have had gone through before they became successful. So I I wouldn't be able to do this. And you don't know, you can't judge me. You don't understand what I have been through. And guys there, I promise you, there are tons of entrepreneurs that have had it way fucking worse than you have way fucking worse. So I just challenged to ask you one question, one question, why, why is it that other people who are successful in business who have more kids than you, who came from countries, third world countries where they didn't have rights like you had, who were able to come to this fucking country themselves, work their ass off when all odds are against them and still rise above and still have success. And honestly, what it comes down to is belief, self-limiting beliefs. And that's what today is all about. So I'm going to give you guys tips and advice on, on how to how to overcome your self-limiting beliefs, how to kind of rewire your brain for success and, and to, you know, when, when, those, when those thoughts come into your head, how to kind of like shoot them down immediately. And one of the first ones, oddly, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's pretty funny, but there are things you can do um, to help your, your brain fire and, and be aware to be successful and not, not have those self-limiting beliefs. And a lot of it is movement and action. So, you know, like, let's say step one, okay? 
one of the biggest ones is when you first wake up in the morning. I see this all the time. I see it from my significant other and drives me fucking crazy. But, you know, what do most people do, Wally, whenever they wake up in the morning? You know, they're tired, they're groggy, and, and you know, you're, maybe your alarm just got off. And, and you know, what do you think's the norm? Nowadays, oh, you check your phone. Mm-hmm. They're over there, like, looking to see if they got any texts. Maybe they get on Facebook or Instagram, scroll through, see if they missed anything over the night. Yeah, or they, or they, you know, or they turn the alarm off and they hit the snooze button and they roll back over again, right? Because you're tired. You need to go through the process of waking up and you're comfortable. You don't want to get up. Well, it's interesting because right then and there, like when you do that, that one fucking action, you don't even realize how much of an impact that has on, on everything, literally fucking everything. So the first tip and the first trick that I've seen and this is from actual neuroscientists, guys. This isn't just coming from me. I'm not just spouting shit out of my fucking asshole. From actual neuro- neuroscience science scientists, you can program your brain to whenever you get up in the morning, if you would just, as soon as you hit your alarm and, and you hear it, and you would just pop up out of bed, it's very, it's very uncomfortable. So what happens is when you're in a situation in life and you have to make a tough decision, whether it's getting into business, getting into entrepreneurship, or you have to do something that's uncomfortable. What your brain does is it burns something called ATP. While he's familiar with this, he was in kinesiology. But it does not take any more ATP to do you know, something extravagant than it does to pop out of bed. You, you burn the same fucking amount. So you can actually train your body to be adapted to this. So when you pop up out of bed... It's uncomfortable. Yes, it's uncomfortable, but you're training your brain to be used to uncomfortable. So because you just did that, another thing that you can do is cold showers. As as weird as it is, I cannot tell you. (laughs) I notice shit. Like I pay attention. When I hear multiple successful people talk about how they adapted themselves to uncomfortable situations, I always hear the cold shower thing come in. And I've actually tested this and I've done this. If you can just get, you know, you know, what's everybody want to do? You want to take a hot fucking shower, right? Well, if you would just turn on the cold water, guess what? It's going to (laughs) suck. It's going to be very fucking uncomfortable. But again, you're training your body and your brain to be adapted to uncomfortable. So when it gets to the point where something comes up, you know, let's say you're at an event. Okay. And, and, and you're, you're in the audience and someone says, oh, someone come up here on stage. What's interesting is as soon as you have that, there's something that happens in your brain, right? Immediately like, oh, well, if I get up on stage, I have to, I have to come up and, and, and I have to walk up on stage. All these people are going to see me and it's uncomfortable. And what's interesting is if you don't make the decision to do it within those first couple of seconds, your brain will pull you back and you're not going to do it. Literally, immediately. You automatically just, you feel that, that many, that many tense and then you, you, you tense up and then your brain automatically justifies why you can't do it. Cause you're like, Oh, that's going to be embarrassing. And then it's hard to talk yourself out of it at that point. But if you do these crazy weird exercises, such so as popping up out of bed, taking cold showers, putting yourself in uncomfortable situations to where your body will be adapted to just making that decision right away. You can put yourself in a situation to where when someone were to say, hey, you know, we need a volunteer, someone come up on stage, without, a, without even you fucking flinching, you will pop up, you will step up, you will just fucking run up there, go on stage before your brain can even shut you down and say otherwise. So it's stuff like that. It's just, it's just simple things as action and training your brain to get you through those self-limiting beliefs. And if you ever find yourself in doubt and you're thinking about, you know, man, my life sucks, like I hate and that you, you know, you were just born differently, that that's not the case. You know, you know, one other person wasn't just born lucky and, and able to be successful and to just be able to start a business. It literally has comes down to the, you know, how you were raised, how you were wired as an individual, because people don't like being uncomfortable. They just don't, you know, take somebody who wants to go and, and, and run a marathon you know, maybe you're out of shape and you don't like running. You, you fucking hate running. You hear that all the time. I mean, who likes to fucking run? I was a runner and I didn't, at, at first I didn't like running. I fucking hated it. <laughs> but it's just so interesting how the brain's defense mechanisms will kick in and, and hold you back. So what you don't realize is the first, the first 
uh, defense of your body and your mind is excuses. That's the number one defense that your, your brain will kick in to be able to protect itself from uncomfortable. So for instance, you think about, oh, well, I got to get up and I want to go run like a mile or I want to go jog and, and be able to do this. Well, you know, I have to go to work. I'm not going to pick up the kids and, you know, all this stuff. I'm, I'm not going to have time to get up and I'm not going to be able to go run. There's just no way. I know I need to get in shape or, or I want to go to the gym, but I, I just, I, I can't, I can't do it this week. Um, you know, and if I'm going to work out, I really need to be eating right. And I still have to get groceries and I don't have any food here to be able to cook and then be able to eat healthy. I'm going to just end up being unhealthy. So maybe I'll wait till next month when I know that I have the budget to be able to get the groceries. So e immediately, immediately somebody else could be posting about their results going to the gym and this and that. And you, you, you'll get defensive and be like, oh, well, you don't understand my situation. You don't understand, like, it, it, it's different. You don't understand what, what I go through and what I've been through. No, no. You just let your fucking brain activate its number one defense mechanism, which is known as fucking excuses. So that's the reason why you're getting held back. That's the reason why you have those self-limiting beliefs. You have to fucking train yourself to be able to get over that shit. And what's crazy is when you do it, Cause you know, me and Wally know, like we've, we've done this shit over time. We have, we, we're not Superman. Of course we have self-limiting beliefs, but when that shit kicks in, you're so aware and you're so adept to other people when you talk to them and they have those type of excuses, you can tell when, what, what people are really saying when they talk to you, you can tell that, that they're, they're being a bitch to their own self-limiting beliefs and they don't even fucking realize it. They're just so attuned to it. It's just their lifestyle. So do you have anything to add to any of this, Wally? Yeah, man. Well, so, so I mean, <clears throat> self-limiting beliefs is such a, is such a strong, such a strong topic in general. It's just like one of those things is like, you know, uh, one thing I definitely want to point out before I go any further is that some people aren't meant to be entrepreneurs. So let's talk, let's talk about that for just one moment. <laughs> just, just a brief moment. Okay. Whenever you do start a venture, if you do, you know, decide to go out and do your own thing, if, if you figure out that business is not for you, then you come back. And if that's your objection, then I'm okay with that objection because at least you tried. Right. But mm -hmm. I'm not talking to you if you tried, we're talking to you if you didn't try and all you did was sit on your laurels. Right. And what I mean by laurel, your heels. So you just kind of like standing there chilling. Think of it like, um, the easiest way that I can think of it is, is when you go talk for, for, for a guy. So for the guys out there, when you go talk to girls at a bar, right. And if you're going to talk to a girl at a bar and you see a really pretty one um, that, that you like, happens to be your type, whatever, a lot of guys, this, this is what happens to them. They'll see the girl, they'll make eye contact, and they'll freeze. They'll freeze. And then, they'll, and then there'll be a split moment in their head, and they'll decide right then and there. They'll go, am I going to walk up to that girl and talk to her, or am I going to stand right here? Mm -hmm. And I would say most people give in to the fear and would just stay still. Well, you know, I'm going to wait right here. Maybe it's not the right moment. They'll talk themselves out, and they'll psych themselves out, right? And they won't even take that chance. And so then they'll go and they'll end the night and they'll say, you know what? Uh, maybe, you know, I'm just not whatever, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, maybe I'm not attractive. Maybe I'm not pretty, whatever, um, because I couldn't get that girl. Well, you didn't even fucking try. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, 100%. And, and that, that brings a good point, too, um, because you know, there, there's a young entrepreneur. Um, you know, I think the kid's like 15 years old now. His name's, uh, he might be 16, uh, Caleb Maddox. And, you know, the kid's written like 10 books. I mean, he gets paid like 10 grand for a speaking gig. Um, makes a shit ton of money as a young teenager. You know, his dad's an entrepreneur, made him read books as a young age. And he talks on stage. Now he knows when he's going to speak on stage in front of other people that the biggest objection they're going to have is his age, right? You know, like, okay, who's this 15 year old telling me what to do? But in reality, he's like, okay, dude, I'm more successful than you. I'm making a lot of money. Maybe you should pay attention to what the hell I have to say. But he brought up when he, he went to a speaking event and, you know, the very for first former shark on Shark Tank was Kevin Harrington. And he saw Kevin Harrington. He went up and, you know, said hi. Wanted to go up to him. I was like, oh, man, I got to say hi to him. But he was kind of nervous. And then he did something very interesting because he even, he even said himself that he's conditioned himself like in uncomfortable situations, like popping up out of bed. Exactly what I told you guys, you know, like just going and doing shit that, that, that makes him feel awkward and uncomfortable. 
And he says he's done it for this situation right here, for this time right here. Because when that fear comes in, he knows that he can't go up and talk to him. He was ready and he just said, he's like, nope. He did. He's like, one, two, three, go. That's what he told himself. As soon as that fear came in, he's like, nope, one, two, three, go. And he forced himself just to walk. Once he started walking, it didn't matter. His brain couldn't stop him. Action was already in place. He went up to Kevin Harrington and said, hello, introduced himself and says, I love your stuff, blah, blah, blah. After the event, he's going to the car. Kevin Harrington's going over to his vehicle and he sees him. He's like, shit, like, I got to go. I got to go talk to Harry Kevin Harrington again. And then, and then he's like, he's like, wow, but everyone's already been trying to talk to him. And he goes, nope, one, two, three, go. And he just walked. Now at that point, there's no turning back. He already overcame that brain, that self-limiting belief from stopping him. His brain couldn't do any, he could, couldn't do shit at this point. Went up to him and said, hi. And said, you know what? You know, is there any way that I can go, I can, I can take you out to lunch? And Kevin Harrington was like, you know what? I respect, I respect your, your guts for coming up and talk to me and, and yada, yada. He said, yes. He ended up telling him about his book stuff. Kevin Harrington ended up being uh, partnering with him on a side business and, and literally texted him. He said, kid, you know, we're going to make millions together. So now they're fucking business partners, <laughs> uh, you know, launching stuff together. They're both making a lot of fucking money. And it, but if he did not overcome that self-limiting belief, if he didn't condition himself as a young you know, 15 year old boy to be able to overcome that self-limiting belief and just take the action and move to just fucking move and go. Whereas everybody else would have had an excuse in their brain. They would have just shut down. Then he wouldn't be successful and be in business with fucking Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. So I want people to understand, you know, they're listening to this, that, you know, your self-limiting beliefs will fuck you up. Like they will, they will hold you back. And And I agree with the statement of entrepreneurship and business isn't for everyone to a fucking extent. What I mean by that is I believe that everyone is capable. Every human being is capable of being a successful entrepreneur. I do. I believe if anyone wanted to be able to uh, start a business and be an entrepreneurship that they can do it. The reason why I think that people can't is because not everyone has the mental toughness to be able to handle rejection and failure and to be able to take the steps necessary to we will rewire their brain because you have to, you have to wire your brain for success. You have to wire your brain for action. You have to wire your brain to be able to overcome self-limiting beliefs. And for a lot of people, that's hard. They're just not willing to, they will just, they will just wallow in, in depression and fear. And that's why they're not able to be successful. It's not that they're not capable of being successful. I don't believe that for a second. I just don't think that they'd be willing to go through the steps that we are saying right now to be able to do that. What do you think, Wally? No, I, I completely agree, 100%. I think, um, you know, I, I think, I think take it back to like caveman style, right? Let's, let's go, let's, let's go really far back. Well, let's go think of it like, okay, we're all cavemen right now, right? Okay, you, you don't classify cavemen as anything else. What, what do cavemen do? They, they, they kill stuff and they bring food back for their family. Right. Every every caveman is capable of doing that. Think of think of the caveman as the entrepreneur. Everybody's capable of doing that. If you're not capable, then survival of the fittest will come and attack you. Um, what was it? Natural selection, right? You just won't make it. You'll know. <laughs> It'll be over. And then that's it. <laughs> but but everybody is capable of providing food for their family, just like everybody's capable of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Absolutely. So I hope for those listening in, you know, today that you found this valuable. Um, I hope that you're not discouraged, but encouraged to realize that, you know, you're capable of doing whatever it is that you want to do. You just have to be able to fight those self-limiting beliefs. And, you know, you, you may still be listening to this. You Maybe you are coming in from Reddit and you may be thinking, you know, no, Wally, no, Dylan. My situation is different. You just don't fucking get it. Uh, and if that's still what's going through in your mind, then, you know, you weren't listening to this episode. You weren't paying attention to what it is that we were actually saying, you know, don't be a bitch to your own brain. You know, don't allow your, your mind and, and your, your self doubt to hold you back from trying to accomplish what you can, because you can't accomplish anything you want to. You just have to be able to overcome those barriers. You have to be able to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. So, you know, 
hopefully this was still, this will sink in. It was still valuable to you guys. You know, hopefully um, you're not too salty. <laughs> um, hopefully no one's getting offended by this, but we just really want to get real and get raw with you guys and, and, and not sugarcoat shit. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, I'm not, we, this podcast isn't, isn't meant to just kind of make things seem that, you know, what they aren't be honest with you and, and tell you what you need to hear so that you guys can be successful, you know, not just what you want to hear. And that's what this is all about. That's what this entrepreneurial journey is all about. So, you know, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You know, we, we love that for the people that have been listening consistently, you know, please give us some feedback, let us know your thoughts, you know, share with us a story of maybe when you realized, okay, you know what, uh, my, my self-limiting doubts, my self-limiting beliefs did hold us back. Share that below. Um, you know, send us a voice message over here on Anchor. If you're tuning in on Anchor, put in the comments. If you're on YouTube, you know, message us on freaking Instagram, guys. Check out our Facebook community. Um, if you never got our PDF of our ebook um, on the nine ways to become unlikable, there will be a link below. Definitely check out that ebook that we made for you guys. And you can find Wally at uh, Instagram.com um, forward slash Wally underscore the robot. You can find me at Instagram.com forward slash Dylan Star Official. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you guys tomorrow. I believe today is what, Thursday? Yes. So we'll see you guys tomorrow for another Rant Friday. And uh, everyone have a great day.